he is working as as i told professor and head department of veterinary public health and epidemiology college of veterinary science and animal husbandry nanaji deshmukh veterinary science university jabalpur he has more than uh, 17 years of professional experience he is working as professor from 6 uh, years he worked associate professor for 4 years and 8 months assistant professor 6 years and 4 months so vast experience he has he has uh, done phd in veterinary public health uh, his research areas means for masters degree he worked prevalence of clostridium perfringens in meats and for phd detection and identification of clostridium perfringens in foods uh, if you see the achievements he got 10th rank in junior research fellowship grf in icr during mbc in veterinary public health iwri ijatnagar and qualified net he has done uh, worked in three research projects first bacteriological examination of animal origin food products to ascertain the food safety mpc st bhopal then another research project star college scheme department of biotechnology new delhi third project milk and milk products quality testing laboratory to ensure safety of public health mandi board bhopal he worked as a advisor in for 17 students advisor co advisor he has published scientific publications more than 50 in international and national uh, reputed journals he has more than 25 popular and extensive articles written three book chapters three manuals he has pat uh, published one patent in government website 13 gene sequences he has published four trainings workshops attended and more than 10 presentations he has delivered in symposia conference workshops and he is the uh, member of scientific organizations uh, four uh, professional scientific organizations he is the member he has many more achievements only brief uh, biota i have mentioned here so with this is short introduction now i uh, welcome i invite and request dr ranvijay singh to deliver his talk dr ranvijay please thank you dr vilas first of all i would like to pay my sincere thanks to the organizers and inviting me to deliver my talk on new emerging viral zoonosis dear friends good morning to everybody actually after 2019 we all have come across throughout our life with the viral zoonotic diseases and that has been imbibed in our life system these viral zoonosis because we all have come across the disease like corona virus and that we all have faced and that's why we people are lucky that we are here and i am delivering this talk and you people are hearing this talk but before that whenever we talk about the zoonosis emerging zoonosis re emerging zoonosis then a word that from which all these things have been derived is zoonosis and in my opinion zoonosis though rudolf virchow has created that this term but it is as old as human civilization what i feel that human have started eating mainly animals and therefore there from that day itself the chances of zoonosis or its association with the animals have been started and that led to the phenomena of zoonosis means transmission of it's a natural transmission of disease from animals to humans and vice versa 
we have a strong relationship with our animals and basically these diseases which are present in the animals they have crossed the host barrier the reason is that genotypic composition is more or less same you know typically we have the barriers means uh, phenotypically we are more or less same like nose ears and different kinds of uh, things from which the virus or bacteria or any other pathogens can enter and defense system skin mononuclear cells neutrophils all these kinds of things so what i feel that because of these things these genotic diseases are very much important because of our sharing the same kind of ecosystem because of our love with these and because of our nature with as to maintain our life if we talk about genosis 1 billion cases of illness and millions of death occur every year globally out of human 1407 pathogens 60% are of genotic in nature if we talk about bacteria and rickettsia they contribute a lot 538 fungi 317 viruses 208 elements 287 and protozoa 57 you all have in knowing if we talk about emerging genosis or emerging diseases when we call a disease to be emerging either it is caused by a parently new agent about which which are present but we don't know or new agent or it is occurring in a new host or occurring in a new geographical area and in the past years out of 177 of total pathogens about 130 were of genotic importance what are the causes of these emerging of diseases if we talk in my opinion there are mainly two causes one is the environment that is all around us the things around us the things that is changing around us that created different kinds of conditions and that led to the emergence because of adjustment or ad, uh, adaptability and the second is the change in the genetic constitution let us first talk about these environmental changes we all have been knowing that globalization we all do believe in globalization now these days and this means the whole world is just like a village and uh, we can move fast we can uh, go from one place to another one means we are going to disseminate the disease at a fast pace we are going to disseminate the pathogens at fast pace and therefore the chances of disease transmission is very fast if we talk about technology and industry we all know that during our corona days we used to prefer opening our windows we used to prefer without acs the reason is that we may get this contagious disease from one or from one another second thing what i feel is urbanization is a very good term but haphazard urbanization the reason is that haphazard urbanization led to the water logging problems it also leads to the development of vectors and ultimately leading to the different kinds of diseases if you just see this thing in 2043 6% of the population were urban but by 2020 we have been 57% no doubt if you just see many people will think only 11% have been increased but in terms of population it is 57% because population is gaining momentum every day but still we have gained 11% in that way you can see this data more than 1187 cities has population above more than 5 lakh i have talked about travel and trade i just want to share one thing that 
during 90s it was 500 million population but international tourists were by 2000 we say 20 it was 1500 million means if you are at one place and the movement is very fast now by a plane we can reach to any place in the world within 24 hours and i just want to share my own experience that during my own time i had never think that we can move in a day from delhi to banaras and in the night uh, in within uh, 12 to 18 hours from delhi to banaras and back again back to delhi this has been possible by bande bharat and when the time will come in future it will be the movement system will be more faster it means that diseases are going to we are going to disseminate these diseases at a very fast pace pace deforestation we all know that there are many diseases that have been coming from the wild animals and we are sharing the reason is that we have destroyed their habitats whether we talk about the KFD, whether we talk about this Nipah virus, whether we talk about many other viruses, and we are saying that these wild animals are having these diseases and they are coming, they are coming to the urban population or suburban population and uh, for their food sake. And for the industry, we are cutting down all these things or for agricultural purposes. You can see this data that between 1990-2020 about 420 million hectare of forest have been lost due to deforestation and we had only 31 percent. Now these days what we are counting in forest is wherever we have planted and by that way we are cheating to ourselves because forest is mainly for these animals but because of increasing population and increasing demand of industrialization we are forced to do agricultural practices we know that with the increasing population there is need of more food grains and we have converted these forest into the agricultural land. Besides being that, we are also planting some plants which needs more irrigation and increasing the vector population. Dam construction, large dams led to the change in the ecosystem of that area because it covers a, it uh, is a big human, uh, big uh, water resources. So it completely changed the flora and fauna of that area. And also it leads to the huge population to rehabilitate at other place, leading to the pressure on the ecosystem. Global warming, we all have been knowing that we have seen that there is reduction in the crop production as well as increase in the vector population. The second thing that I have shared with you is genotypic change. We know that with the point mutation or nucleotide changes, we are getting different kinds of viruses. That there is a minute change we call antigenic drift. And with the change of the chromosomes parts through recombination process, there is a development of a new molecule and that led to the epidemic or pandemic. The viruses that are commonly we people are getting are the flaviviruses, bunya viruses, paramyxo, phylo, arena, lysa, alpha, orthomyxovirus and these viruses have been uh, leading to one or more new emerging strain time and again. These are the, some viral genotic diseases with symptoms showing fever with or without rashes, like in chikungunya, dengue, west nail, rift valley, 
fever, polar idiotic fever. And if you just see, most of the diseases are being transmitted by these vectors. And rodents, our domestic animal or wild animals or birds are the reservoir of these diseases. These are the viruses which are showing in cephalitis, like JE, West Nile, Russian Spring, although I have not mentioned equine encephalitis, Nipah viruses that I have not mentioned here, and hemorrhagic fever, like chikungunya, KFD, yellow fever, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, Marburg and Ebola. So, because of these viruses, we are getting different kinds of diseases. Let us talk about this flavivirus. This is a positive single standard enveloped RNA virus, and they are mainly being transmitted by the orthopods, primarily ticks and mosquitoes, and are responsible for encephalitis and hemorrhagic diseases. They are being going to cause different kinds of diseases like Japanese encephalitis, West Nile, yellow fever, dengue, and Zika virus. Ticks, they are going to transmit KFD, OMS, hemorrhagic fever. If we talk about the Bunya virus, it is a, the strands are three segmented and that's why such kind of viruses like orthomixo, Bunya viruses, they are going for recombination and developing a new strains. Basically, these are single standard enveloped RNA viruses. And these are mainly transmitted by hematophagous orthopods, including mosquitoes, measles, flies, and ticks. In the, this, the new emerging viruses are Hunter virus, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever virus, Rift Valley fever virus. So, Let us first talk about this Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Crimean Congo, as the name indicates, it was first of all occurred in Crimea in 1944, and therefore it's derived its name and later on in 1956. And it is no being known for its hemorrhagic fever with mortality rate up to 40 percent. It is endemic in Africa, Balkans, Middle East and in some portions of India. Although it is transmitted by many big ticks, but this disease is mainly being caused by hyalomatic. And human-to-human -human transmission is possible both by ticks as well as for by coming in contact with the animals as well as by human-to-human -human contact is through human-to-human -human contact by their blood, secretions, organs, and also nosocomial transmission is possible. And there is no vaccine available for people or animals. I mentioned this Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever because in 2011, a case was reported in Gujarat in nosocomial, as a nosocomial infection. And later on by 2015, it has been reported from Rajasthan and Gujarat. Transmission, as I have said, it has reservoir host as wild as well as domestic animals. Birds are generally resistant, but ostriches are susceptible and have led to the outbreak of diseases. And the, the animals are getting infected by the ticks bite and that virus is going to cause viremia in the animals. And again, that tick got that things. Tick got that viruses from these animals. Besides that, there is a trans stadial transmission of the disease in ticks. The majority of cases have occurred in people involved in livestock industries, like agricultural workers, 
slaughter house workers and veterinarians because of coming in contact with the blood tissues as i have already stated transmission in human to human is by nosocomial or by coming in close contact with the blood secretion organs and by coming in contact with the also by the medical equipments reuse of needles and also contamination of medical supplies you can see the crimean congo hemorrhagic fever cycle that how the disease is being transmitted among the different animals and humans this is showing the endemicity of this that uh, it has covered the rajasthan and gujarat region the whole pakistan even uh, middle east countries and african countries this is the geographical distribution of crimean congo hemorrhagic fever in 2022 if you just see we have been reporting about 5 to 49 cchf cases per year while red portion is indicating more than 50 that is the middle east countries that balkans regions are going to show if we talk about the symptoms initially flu like symptoms but later on nuchal rigidity there is a pain in the right upper abdominal region as well as petechial hemorrhages which uh, takes form of due to uh, the sarcoidosis as you have seen and uh, such kind of hemorrhages you will find out in mouth and throat also and later on in severely ill patients there is a problem of kidney failure liver failure as well as pulmonary failure this figure is showing about the different kinds of symptoms the transmission the whole thing about the cchf if we talk about diagnosis we all know that pcr molecular elisa serum neutralization all these things but the main thing is that while taking the samples we have to take care because the virus is very fragile and contagious too and it can be transmitted from direct or indirect contact so we have to take care if we want to prevent and control we have to prevent the ticks we have to take care while handling the animals we have to take care while handling the patient we have to take care while handling the pathogens in the lab that's why bsl4 laboratory should be we have to take it into the bsl4 laboratory we have to go for proper waste management of any medical things so and above all we all have to create awareness in the people although inactivated mouse brain derived vaccines have been available in some part of the europe but it is not available in other parts of the country and certain drugs like rivavirin should be used but at early stage that is a good one hanta virus if we talk about the hanta virus we are going to remember new world hanta viruses and old world countries new world is mainly going to affect in the america and old world means europe and asian countries and it was first of all found during korean war where in 3000 united nation took fell ill with korean hemorrhagic fever with rena syndrome the second outbreaks in us was found in 1993 with hanta virus pulmonary syndrome means affecting to the respiratory system or hanta virus cardio pulmonary syndrome means affecting both cardiac system and respiratory uh, pulmonary system and more than 21 hanta viruses are present and they have different rodents uh host species as a reservoir and 
about 150, more than 150 cases of hantavirus, hemorrhagic fever with the renal syndrome are occurring all over the world with more than half in China. From 2020, 833 cases were reported in US, which includes HPS as well as non-HPS. And many more antiviruses are going unnoticed, the reason being that, that we have not been able to find out the diseases and the diseases are also apparent in nature, particularly in the developing countries. This is showing that how this antivirus cardiac pulmonary syndrome, we have seen that new world, mainly American countries. And uh, this Brazil, Argentina, America itself, Alaska region, they are going to have more cases. While if we talk about this China and ever portions, they are having more than 500 cases every year with the antivirus hemorrhagic fever with renal syndrome. This is a case study done by, these are the case studies done by the Center for Disease Control regarding antiviruses till uh, 2020, as I have discussed you, that about 833 cases were reported, 807 were of HPS cases, non-pulmonary antiviruses were 26, and sex-wise, 62% were found in male, 38% in female. And the average age was 37.5 years. And the cases of hantavirus infection resulting in death were near about 35%. This is the area where hantavirus has been reported in USA. If we talk about after Bunya virus, the emerging viruses that comes in the list is the paramyxovirus that is enveloped, negative strand, non-segmented RNA virus. And that includes the NIPA and HENDRA virus, that is HENPA virus, genus, all under the category of genus, HENPA virus. And these are highly lethal genotic paramyxoviruses. And their reservoir host is the bats, fruit bats, teropas of the food. And Mainly, these are going to cause respiratory and neurological disease in humans and domesticated animals. And they need BSL-4 laboratory to handle. If we talk about Hendra virus, this virus was first of all found in Australia, in the horses, and the persons who are handling these viruses were getting infected like farmers, like veterinarians. Some veterinarians have been recovered. And the second outbreak was occurring in the, as the name indicates, Hendra virus from the Hendra region of Brisbane, which uh, we are in uh, twenty-one horses were reported to be infected, and two people were got, getting the disease. As of July 2016, 53 disease incidents, over 70 horses have been reported. A total of seven humans have contacted Henda virus from infected horses, particularly through close contact during care or necropsy of field or dead horses. As I've said, it has come from the bats, as has been suspected, and horses may got this by their droppings of urine or fecal material or their you try and discharges from the plants. This is all about the cases of Hendra viruses in Australia. If we talk about Nipah virus, then we have not forgotten this thing just in 2018 when we had uh, this disease has created havoc all over the country by occurring its incidence in Kerala. And Nipah has derived its name from a place in Malaysia. 
and the first outbreak was occurred in 1998 and 99 wherein pigs were suffering from uh, these diseases from nipah viruses and the persons handling were also suffered a lot and because of that about a million of pigs were being uh, culled and about more than 100 deaths casualties were occurred in the human beings. After that, from 2001 onward, the disease has been reported in Bangladesh and India. In 2001 and 2007, it was occurred in, uh, restricted only to the West Bengal in our country. If you just see, we can get the Hendra virus cases in this graph, in this map, as well as Nipah viruses. This is also locations of Nipah viruses outbreaks. And Nipah virus distribution in Bangladesh in different years and number of cases and their fatalities. Nipah virus distribution in India, as I've said, in the West Bengal mainly before 2018, in several parts of West Bengal. In 2001, it was found in Siliguri, Nogao in 2003. And this figure is depicting that uh, Muhammad Sadiq was the person in 2018 getting this disease from Kojipur district and mainly in Kerala, Malapuram and Kozikot district were affected. And that disease was getting notified on 18th May by NIV Pune. Presence of Nipah virus in blood and fluid. And this is the Nipah outbreak in Kozikot district, three kilometer buffer zone around the epicenter to take precautions. Mode of transmission, we know that through infected animals. Again, bat is the main reservoir. And in India, we get this in Kerala, we get this by consumption of dead palm, sorry, uh, that sap of uh, palm sap. And that may be, uh, we are expecting that getting contaminated with the urine or through saliva of that bats. Otherwise, the disease, as I have said, high case fatality and highly contagious. The disease are getting transmitted directly and come in contact with the infected animals, their secretions or their lesions. And uh, by direct contact, we know that from bats or pigs, through blood, urine or saliva, Animal to animal, there is a large number of species are getting affected with domesticated, like dogs, cats, goats, and horses. Sheep are also getting affected. These are the symptoms. We know that mainly going to cause respiratory symptoms and encephalitis symptoms. Diagnosis, we know that nucleic acid amplification test, different tests are rapid diagnostic tests are now these available. Prevention and control, if you want to get prevented, then um, one thing is that we have to take care because no vaccine is available. Hand washing, avoid contact with bats or pigs. Avoid areas where bats are known to roost. I just want to share my own view that in Malaysia that Pigs were getting the disease. The reason is that because of large scale destruction of the jungles. And that led to the movement of these bats to the areas where pigs were rearing. And that causes the transmission of disease. Antiviral treatments are of, uh, available like remdesivir drugs, but we should have to give in time. And also monoclonal antibodies are uh, test is going on. If we talk about the alpha viruses, 
This is Toga viridi enveloped single stranded positive sense RNA virus. And these are genetic pathogens, mainly in rodent. Uh, they are found in rodents. And these alpha viruses are going to cause diseases in tropics as well as temperate region. The important one like Venezuelan equine encephalitis, chikungunya, Ross River, Mayaro viruses, Eastern and Western equine encephalitis, and Sindhubis viruses, which are uh, going to cause disease in temperate region. This is Australian bat Lysa virus, about which we all know that in 1996 to 7, there is an case because of these bats fruit bats, which are harming this pathogen. And it is similar to the rabies viruses, although antigenically different. Now come to phylovirus. This is a very important virus. As far as if we talk about the fatality is concerned, because this virus can go up to 90% fatality. And it created, it is going to cause two diseases. One is the Marburg, another is Ebola. It was first of all discovered in Marburg or Frankfurt, Germany and Belgrade in Yugoslavia while working on a chimpanzee, monkey, sorry, by the scientist. And they were leading transmission of diseases to many people in 1967. And 31 people were affected and seven had death with this. The reservoir was African fruit bat. And from then, it has emerged, uh, emerged sporadically. Mainly in African countries as the figure is shown. And in 2004 and 5 and 98, 9, 2000, there was a uh, going to create two large epidemics. Otherwise, sporadic cases were reported, mainly from the African region, either coming in contact with the persons of African region or coming in contact with these animals, either bats or with the uh, that monkeys. So the disease is getting transmitted to the people and persons who are working in mines too have been suffered with this because they contain bad population. This is the outbreaks in different years. And if you talk 2004 and 5, about 252 people were affected with 227 death, 90% death rate. In the same family, Ebola viruses, and we all know that this is time and again creating havoc in the African countries. Thanks to the God that it has not come out and it has been restricted mainly to that place one. And it was first of all identified in 1976. And as the name, it was occurred near a village near Ebola River. With and the biggest outbreak was occurring because of this two, uh, during 2004 to 16. The two main stems are uh, of this Ebola, Sudan and Jaire, is responsible for occurrence of the diseases. And in 2014-16, WHO has reported 28,652 cases of Ebola with 11,325 deaths. Again, the fruit bats, were the main culprit, were main reservoir of this. And they are all, the disease is getting to all close contact through blood secretions, organ, transplant, body fluids of animals or anything or humans, like fruit bats, chimpanzee, gorillas, antelope, porcupines, whosoever is dead or ill. And the disease has been found to be transmitted because of a practice of burying the human soul. Those who are fit and fine going to bury the humans and coming in contact with these humans who are dead, and they are going to get the disease. 
these are the areas as i have said basically the sudan strain and this uh jare strain and this jare strain has created 2004 and 5 affecting to the sierra leone live area guinea and senegal and killing more than 10000 people these are the symptoms i just want to show you although symptoms are that uh, flu like symptoms later on there is a um, internal bleeding at last there is organ failure i just want to i have seen this ebola virus ka attack to pehle se tez bukhar ka aana chauthe din haath pairon mein rashes पांचवें से उल्टी दस डायरिया आठवें से नवे दिन इंटरनल ब्लीडिंग ग्यारहवें दिन मरीज कुमा में चला जाता बारहवें दिन ऑर्गन फेल टू वर्क एंड डेथ प्रिवेंशन एंड कंट्रोल डब्ल्यू एच ओ हैज रिकमेंडेड मेनली टू टेस्ट ऑल दो देर आर मेनी टेस्ट अवेलेबल दैट इज ऑटोमेटेड एंड सेमी ऑटोमेटेड न्यूक्लिक एसिड टेस्ट दैट इज द प्रिस्क्राइब टेस्ट एंड रैपिड एंटीजन टेस्ट इफ एन एटी कैन नॉट बी परफॉर्म but after nat positivity that has to be ratified by the sorry rad positivity that has to be ratified by nat test supportive and uh, rehydration therapy monoclonal antibodies are available now these days besides some vaccines have been developed by the european countries as well as by the american by the us and uh, that vaccine is effective just after one year but this vaccine is mainly effective against jare strain although and not effective and still sudan strain is creating problem in uh, this african region if we talk about the rna virus again this virus is divided into two groups one is the old world and new world on the basis of genetic differences new world means western hemisphere and that include chapare virus a fatal going to cause hemorrhagic fever found in bolivia one arito found in venezuela and old world that is eastern hemisphere and uh, that is going to be uh in africa europe and that includes lassa fever which is being uh, transmitted by the rodents and lymphocytic choreomeningitis virus which is going to cause the encephalitis overall the rna virus is mainly known for their uh, hemorrhagic fever and this encephalitis if we talk about this emerging viruses we cannot left corona virus because from the past two years we all have been hearing since 2019 or 20 and it's a big family but we always used to remember the three viruses that were of genetic importance and being going to caused in the human being the first one sars covid sars one which was occurred in 2002 in china in guangdong province from a bush meat market it is being said but bats are said to be reservoir and the chinese have a their best delicacy is civet cat and this disease was notified in march by who and going to create a global alert in 2003 about 8000 people have been infected in more than 29 countries and resulting in 774 deaths india reported three cases with no mortality this map is showing that uh, distribution of sars black figure is showing this confirmed cases red is showing confirmed infections and grey without confirmed cases then second in 2012 march middle east respiratory syndrome restricted only to the middle east countries 
transmitted mainly from the camels to the human being. Again, primary host were the bat, and about 35% people were died, whosoever have been infected. Human to human transmission has been also possible in this disease, but with close contacts or in human healthcare settings. Now we talk about COVID-19. We cannot forget this one. And we are fortunate, as I have said, that either the speaker or the hearers are fortunate that they have escaped this one. Although we have not escaped, but we are, thanks to God, that we are saved. And this virus was first of all found in Wuhan 2019. And it was declared as a pandemic in March 2020. Till date, there are about 62 crore cases with death of 65 lakh, more than 65 lakh. India have more than 4.5 crore of people infected with 5.29 lakh death. If we talk about the vaccine doses, 1272.3 million doses have been given till date. And About, uh, if we talk about our own countries, we have crossed more than 1 billion, sorry, 1 crore we have written, but it's we have crossed 1 billion dose. 74.4% of population has been given this vaccine and two doses have been given in 94.8 crore population. Loss to the global economy leading to the 8.5 trillion in output next two years and 13.5% of GDP fall, downfall in Indian GDP. Fatality rate was 1% in this disease. We all have been suffered in first phase, second phase, or first phase is known for the older people, killing immunocompromised and older people. Second was the deadliest, and younger and older both have been affected. And the third one is known for that Omicron variant is known for its contagiousness, wherein we all have been infected. This figure is showing the death per million and our country is having uh, 35 per million population. USA is showing 313. If you just see, most of the developed countries are uh, which have a more uh, good uh, in their, their diagnostic or they have good reporting system have shown more deaths per million. This is the cumulative cases confirmed as of 24 May 2022. We don't need to talk about too much about uh, this because this virus, if you just, no doubt, I used to talk about BSL, we used to talk about PPE kit, we talk about safety measures, but nobody was following. Nobody people was knowing about uh, N95 mask and other things. But this virus has made everybody known about disinfectant, PPE kit, biosafety labels. So, now come to another disease, that is monkeypox, which we have just recently here. It is a disease caused by orthopox virus. And uh, I just, uh, I'm sorry for inconvenience caused to you people. This monkey box. And uh, this is uh, being caused by orthopox. Previously, I was talking only about RNA viruses. Now we have been switched to only one this monkeypox DNA virus. And this is similar to smallpox, but with milder reasons and with low mortality rate. It has two clads. We all know that clad one that is occurring in the Congo basin, Central Africa. And this strain is more virulent in nature with a death toll up to 10%. Clad two occurring in Western Africa with the death all near about three to five percent and the latest one is because of class two that is from western african strain 
if we talk about the reservoirs, monkeypox virus has a many reservoirs like prairie dog monkeys. This prairie dogs, these uh, rats. And in 1958, Preben Magnus was first to identify this in a crab eating macaque. And outbreaks of 2003 in the United States was due to the prairie dogs which was infected from an imported Gambian pouch rat from Ghana. Actually, basically, the disease had been mainly transmitted from Africa. If we talk about the transmission of the disease, the disease is transmitted through close contact with the animals and uh, from there is uh, touching uh, human to human transmission is also possible through close contact through droplet transmission through skin from the scabs or through uh, sex we can say and uh, many animals are also involved If we talk about the epidemiology of the disease, as I've said, mainly tropical forest in Central Africa and West Africa. The recent outbreak was notified in, on 6 May 2020 in UK, London. In a patient with a recent travel history from Nigeria. And due to because of this, since the disease has been spread to European countries, American countries, WHO declared this outbreak as a public health emergency of international concern. As of 7 October 2022, 71,000, more than 71,000 ca confirmed cases with 26 deaths in more than 107 countries. India had 12 cases with one death. W, according to whole world, it's a more categorized at moderate. But for European countries and America, it is categorized at high risk. African, Eastern region and uh, Asian region has been moderate, while Western Pacific region is assessed as low moderate risk one. Monkeypox reporting in different regions. If you just see Americans are highly suffered, one, uh, one are the one who are suffering most, followed by European countries, and then African and Asia. This is the confirmed cases till 6 October in the various countries. Number of cases is being shown. And we all know that there is a Papules, pustules are being formed, as in the case of smallpox, and uh, the symptoms are normal flu-like symptoms, swollen lymph nodes, fever, skin rash. If you just see, rash is the most common symptom with 83.6 percent, fever 57.8 percent, and uh, genital rash 45.5 percent, lymphadenopathy in 29 percent of cases. If we talk about the treatment, there is no known cure, but we can use the smallpox vaccine that is 85% effective in preventing the infection as well as severity of the disease. Monkeypox from modified vaccine Ankara has been approved, but they have a limited availability. Antiviral drugs are also available. Risk of death is 1 to 10%. Other measures should uh, we should uh, keep away ourselves from the uh, social gathering. Also, we should have a regular washing, avoiding sick peoples and animals. If we talk about the prevention and control of these diseases, one thing I would like to tell. We talk about the One Health, but what this One Health approach is? This One Health approach is 
the carrying of the nature that means flora and fauna both because we have the highest cranial capacity in this on this earth so we have to love not only to these being a veterinarian we not only have to love the animals we also have to love to these nature we have to become a brand ambassador to prevent and control such kind because through that way these wild animals will get their uh, diseases through that areas and the word that sustainable development should be followed sustainable is only possible through one health approach and if we talk about the these emerging viruses these are going to cause diseases because there is no vaccine available for these viruses no effective drug is available and moreover there is need of lot of research and rapid diagnostic test in these areas so and above all that we talk about is public awareness and we the scientific community are the ambassador of that we not restrict ourselves with the lab but also to the land i just want to recite one maha upanishad saying the word is a family one is relative the other is stranger say the small minded the entire world is family live the magnanimous be detached be magnanimous lift up your mind enjoy the fruit of brahmanic freedom thank you once again to you all uh, today uh, morning because of as uh, sir was busy with urgent meeting uh, sir couldn't give the his uh, presentation but we requested lakshman sir to give presentation today so sir has agreed and uh, now uh, uh, sir will uh, present his topic on application of electron microscopy uh, for the uh, assessment of animal food safety and uh, about sir uh, uh, dr mekela uh, lakshman born on 20th february 1963 in a remote village of illiterate family sir has completed ug and pg from apa au phd from sri venkateswara veterinary university and he has served uh 40 years as a veterinarian at various capacities and get aligned with the reputed organizations different organizations including uh poultry industry uh he worked as a resident veterinarian department of animal husbandry government of andhra pradesh veterinary assistant surgeon then acharya ng ranga agricultural university as a work there as a assistant professor uh Sri Venkateswara Veterinary University Assistant Professor and Associate Professor, as well as Officer in Charge of uh, Raska Labs and P.V. Narsimha Rao, Telangana Veterinary University. Uh, he worked as Associate Professor, Professor and Officer in Charge of uh, Raska Labs. Uh, he is an uh, expertise in veterinary pathology in general and expert in postmortem examination of animals, birds, zoo, and wild animals. exposed deeper insight into uh, the histopathology immunohistochemistry ultra structural uh, pathology and he has gained skills uh, hands on experience in uh, various laboratory techniques including uh, molecular pathology and different types of uh, microtomes he able to handle different microscopes including bright field dark field uh, transmission and scanning electron microscopes significant contributions in the electron microscopy diagnostic cytology and clinical pathology authors of few practical manuals for uh, undergraduate postgraduate scholars and em techniques he is a member in more than 9 scientific associations uh, reviewers for several nas rate, uh, rating impact factor journals of international national uh, review he awarded with uh, icr junior fellowship in gynecology in the year 1994 uh, then rutna stam uh, 19 uh, 2017 femsi 2020 adarsh vidya saraswati uh, rashtriya puraskar best teacher award 
IAVP Best Teacher Award 2020, Outstanding Scientist Award by uh, VD Good Technology Factory 2021, and Bharat Ratna Rajiv Gandhi Gold Medal Award from Global Economics uh, Progress and Research Association in the year 2021. Sir has extended uh, expert service to different public service commissions to draft the syllabus, preparation of question papers, evaluation, online of uh, answer scripts, expert panel member for uh, different interviews, nominated as an expert for selection of faculty in veterinary university, drafted uh, by ICR for confidential work, nominated as expert member, research advisory committee member by ICR, and also nominated as a member of inspection for life science institutes. He has attended 32 international and national conferences, symposiums, and presented lead and invited and uh, memorial lectures. He has delivered 56 guest lectures in different platforms and guided 72 postgraduate and PhD scholars. So he has organized and acted as an associated member in seven international and national training programs. Guest speaker in international. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Sir, I'm audible? Yes, sir, yes, very clear. Yeah. A uh, very good afternoon to everyone. I'm extremely sorry because I have deviated from my timings, what was allotted to me by 12 to one o'clock exactly to say. So I requested the organizers to extend the time, postpone the time at 3.30 to 4.30. So with uh, he has given so much of uh, information, whatever I have. So I'm just working as a, I think, uh, uh, if uh, what you call uh, faculty are involving in this training program, I welcome you all to attend the International Veterinary Pathology Congress, forthcoming the dates are in the November 17th to 20th. Uh, 17, 18, 19 is the, what to call uh, conference. Their international participants are also, uh, I think uh, personally they are coming uh, after a dozen people from different fields. And the 20th, it is a workshop on uh, electron microscopy. With these few words, I would like to go ahead with the, my assignment. The assignment was given to me to talk something about the application aspect. Uh, regarding electron microscopy, how far it is fit into the, the food safety. When the topic was announced, or I can, uh, they have uh, asked me to uh, contribute on this, then we have a little experience receiving the samples from different food industry in and around Hyderabad and also from the northern parts of different states. Two, three companies have approached us. Uh, in those uh, uh, slides, I have a what we call little experience in the food safety. Uh, application of electron microscopy or so on. So in any sort of things, whether it's a diagnostic or research or the food safety microscopy, the preparation of the sample is most important. It is a crucial and uh, uh, very, very important area is uh, processing of the specimens. So with your all permission, I will go ahead with the presentation. So now these are like a, a small evolutionary changes from the first image to the last image. People are now talking, we are touching the moon and we are planning to go to the what to call the Mars or so on and so forth. So that is a tremendous what to call improvement is there in the science and technology. Here you can see the a bright field what to call the, the bright field microscope followed by the electron microscope or so. Now this is the scenario throughout the globe, not only with the veterinary science or the food safety measures or whatsoever is the science, the boundaries. You can look at the space. Or you can look at this now. I said it's we are touching at the Mars or so, or even the sun radius. People are touching in the different countries. But good old practice of uh, what we call Hippocrates period onwards, how the medicine is being evaluated. Now, this is a uh, fourth one I can say. Now, I think it is a uh, last year only, but this year, uh, uh, latest images are not included. Whoever has been made the uh, what we call the Nobel orators. So now we are the science is at the average of what we call microsurgery of the DNA. So despite of all these things, we are all being evidenced about the COVID-19 last two years, we are not in a position to meet each other physically and to exchange uh, our cardiac relations. Uh, that was the reason how innocent days, people used to have only three important practices, that's a physical distance, washing of hands very thoroughly, and uh, protect your uh, what you call uh, upper uh, respiratory mucosa or so on, or nostrils with your uh, what you call the mask. Now that was the practice when the 18th century episodes were there. And even the 20th is advanced techniques uh, what I just uh, focused previous slide. So we are touching the 
Mars and we are trying to reach into the orbit of the sun, but we are in a position to maintain this, the fundamental principles of the nature which has been provided us, like uh, physical distance, washing and protecting our nose with the masks. Now, uh, we'll enter into the area of science. We all know that the globe has been made up of, it's all 70 to 75 percent water and rest is the land on which we are just struggling and fighting each other and doing so many wars or so. Whether it is a micro war or it's a, a weapon used war, if it's a nano wars are coming out. So 70% of the 70 to 73 to 75%, uh, very typically it is like a nature is a water. Similar way, similar way, if you look at the, any biological structure, similar way, if any biological structure, it is simulating the a globe. Like 70 to 75 percent of the water is there, whether the animal cell or the plant cell or the bacteria or the virus or so on and so forth. So that's the way how water will play a major role and it is a important to nutrient for all the living being, including the uh, globe itself even, right? So uh, at the, at the, at the, by keeping these things in the mind, I would just like to the forecast uh, things, uh, how the hypocrites, what we have mentioned. Declare the past, diagnose the present, and foretell the future. That the challenges are totally different, and how eagerly we are disturbing the nature. The nature, what to call, also started disturbing us. We are being evidence with so many activities right now. And this is the way how we can just look at the thing. This is only the electron microscopy, which is being imposed, color imposed. And this is a specially designed electron microscope, the color imposed cell. All over the globe, it is in the circulation and uh, it is in a very good article. If anybody is having, you can note down this and you can go ahead with the uh, review article on this. So as far as the number of samples, what I've been experienced for the past 20, 15 to 18 years. So number of different types of specimens I'm receiving, including uh, samples from the food industry. So I'll tell you one story here. The food industry, how we have been given uh, our uh, importance is that there is a consignment uh, from one of the food industry in and under Hyderabad, near about two containers have been written from the US market, stating that your, your products are, they are, I, I can say the wafers and the chocolates and so on and so forth, where products are being contaminated with the insect parts. Keeping that, these are certain levels are there and uh, it's beyond the, what you call the uh, range, they're definitely they're rejected. So the two containers have been rejected. The cruise of business is going on there. Similarly, with uh, even the vaccine preparation, I'm not going to touch about the vaccine preparation, but this food uh, safety aspect uh, assignment was given. I would like to emphasize on that. So then they have moved here and there and a uh, number of laboratories, number of techniques they have used. And uh, none of the technique has been satisfactorily Protocol focus to the people of uh, US embassy or so, or is not embassy, it's a food safety uh, organization. They're not convinced. Then they have approached the microscopy laboratories in and around Hyderabad. And uh, finally, they have come to us and we have a elaborated discussion. And I just checked all the ingredients, what they are used. And the, uh, they are all in a good hygienic condition or so. But the insects and uh, even the, uh, the, the, the arthropods, I can say that word, or they have their own way to enter into that and that has been focused uh, in those consignments and uh, it has been uh, reused and uh, remanufactured again. They have been their own laboratory. That's our far, what to call uh, economics. So we all know that the number of techniques are available throughout the globe and uh, it all depends upon our assignment and our uh, requirement based on that we use a different sort of techniques. So as I'm mentioning that, previous slide or so, the cytometry, for example, or you can say the other techniques like uh, fluorescent microscopy, or you can say like uh, uh, what to call uh, genomics, proteomics, whatsoever is making uh, as, as far as the diagnostic purpose is concerned. But as for the food technology techniques, I am very much poor in that. But I know very few that uh, it can be assessed in a different way, spectrophotometry or so on. So in addition to that, we have a light microscopy, electron microscopy and fluorescent microscopy to demonstrate the any abnormal things are there in the uh, what to call the processed foods, processed foods, number one. Number two, any pathogens, which are foodborne pathogens are there, are that those things can be easily demonstrated by using a specialized designed light microscopy like fluorescent microscopy, which can be tagged with the a specific fluorescent dye and it can be demonstrated and easily we can demonstrate those things by using electron microscopy. So the slide, the importance of this slide is that there are so many techniques are available 
in the field of science and each and every technique will have its own entity and its own significance. No technique is superior and no technique is inferior. They have the complementary each other. The results have to be properly coordinated and properly uh, what to call uh, uh, analyzed and to give the final report. Uh, as far as the food safety is concerned, I shall focus a few slides in later on. So these are the certain images uh, which are related with the food industry. And we just uh, we can look at the one of the cell which is being uh, uh, received from the Nazi meat, I can say that word. And uh, where the alpha cell of a pancreas, it is of course, it's an experimental animal related issue. That's the reason we have a few something like a, the round structures are over here. They're all looks like, looks like virus particles. For a beginner, it is a very much difficult to say that this is like a, a, a slightly hyperplastic, uh, uh, a smooth endoplasm reticulum. To the best of my knowledge, and it was published, of course, is smooth endoplasmic reticulum. It gives a wrong impression to the beginner that it may be the virions or it may be the virus like particles. The rest you can see the nucleus and nuclear changes, of course. I said it is like an experimental origin. So that's the reason. So my purpose over here is if any uh, what to call uh, good born, the, 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 the virus particles are there in the a given tissue samples, it is can be easily demonstrated in the cytosol. So these are these are the certain things like a, a abnormal way of the nucleus and the mitochondria, like you can see the things and the lipid droplets are the dark uh, what you call uh, structures uh, which are there in the cytosol. Again, we'll find the smallest vesicles, like less small uh, globular structures are there, and uh, these have to be. Uh, properly, again, uh, uh, what you call differentiated from that of the virus particles I just mentioned. This is like a, a beautiful area how we can see the, uh, it's a, like a, a kidney section which is showing the, like a protocyte area of this area. And these are the microcapillaries showing uh, uh, a, a macrophage and the lymphocyte in a larger manner. So this uh, is from uh, what to call an NRC meat, I can say. It's a processed meat uh, which is free from the contamination of any pathogens. Uh, so they they usually process it different technologies they are using and they are wrapping the what to call compressed muscles in a different way and they have different uh, what to call packaging material they are using. So to check that if it is being contaminated and uh, its uh, structural details are there with the given specimen or so. So for that reason, they have uh, what to call uh, Analyze the samples over here. You can see the dark band, light band, and the fibrils, or so on, and so forth. It's a clearly, uh, this is the same thing. But in this, uh, we'll find uh, what to call the, the 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 nucleus in the center, and of course, it's a completely distorted muscle fiber. The taste of this muscle preparation is different from this uh, what to call the muscle. So it's all like a uh, 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 preservatives what they have used and uh, technology what they have used for the preservation at the different temperatures, storage period, and wrapping a number of what you call the layers or so on and so forth. So they are working on the so many what you call uh, projects are there with the people they are working on that. This is like again uh, it's like a. <clears throat> a tickle sample, of course, uh, there are uh, uh, is a is a is a like a. A blood vessel, which is showing, uh, of course, we it is not so important as I said. The food industry is concerned, and food uh, processing is concerned. Just for the benefit, how the microcapillary and nucleated erythrocytes shows that, and uh, for a beginner, for a beginner, it is the biggest challenge. What exactly this is? It maybe looks like a bacteria. So it's not the bacteria. Bacteria structures I'll show you later on. How does it looks like even in the tissues or so? So this the uh, reason how we, this will be is being. Uh, uh, demonstrated or so. So these are the IB virus particles, uh, uh, which uh, is this is like uh, <clears throat> a tracheal sample. Uh, it's a what do you call uh, a congested blood vessel. You can look at the things. And the previous slide is a similar way. And uh, the autophagosome, whatever we say, these are like a double membranes or so. So these things visually gives for the beginner like it. Uh, it looks like something a foreign material, some parasitic uh, larval structures or so. So to avoid that, uh, I just started focusing on this. These are the what you call the a tiny what you call projections, uh, microvilli like structures. All these are the virus particles which are there in the cytosol of epithelium of the trachea. And uh, similar way you can find this is a nucleus is completely distorted. These are all the IB virus particles which are there in the dilated trachea, uh, 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 rough endoplasmic reticulum of tracheal what you call epithelial cells or so. 
So similar way you can find things uh, like a mitochondria, mitochondria and virus particles. In the beginning slide, I have focused something like a, a, a smooth endoplasmic reticulum, which is in the hyperplastic in nature or so. Now you can compare these things in the previous slides, how the virus particles have to be differentiated from that of the, uh, uh, what you call uh, natural structures or uh, what you call the cell structures or so. See the sink, the mitochondria over here is a proper and it is a cell junction or so. Uh, these are heavy pox virus. Uh, so we know the things about the ballooning degeneration, but the demonstration of the things can be seen over here. Of course, it is not so foodborne disease causes, but it is just as a cut summary, I would like to show the things, how the virus particles can be demonstrated in the process of tissue samples. This is the marine sample, or you can say we have a number of samples where we see from different parts of India. Now, this is stations. So it's a, like RLO, it's a recreation like organisms which can cause the diarrhea in human being if it is being consumed by the individual. So some of the common bacterial pathogens usually can cause a foodborne diseases like Salmonella, Clostridium, Campylobacter, Shigella, Listeria, Monocytogenes, or so on and so forth, in which we have a very few exposures and experience in that. So how these organisms are being attached with the uh, microvilli of the intestines? Of course, these uh, uh, slides are not from Ruska laboratory, it is from one of the review article I have taken. So there are so many, what to call, uh, constraints. I have removed uh, certain slides which have been prepared from Ruska labs, which directly not directly connected with the food uh, processing way. So this is uh, a article, is a review article where the foodborne is the bacterial or pathogens, how they are attached with this. So in the light microscopy, we could able to see the projections and we cannot demonstrate the uh, bacilli until unless if you make uh, a special stains, uh, if any, uh, for the demonstration of the organisms which are attached with the microvilli. Of course, the processing techniques which are involved in the light microscopy may not permit us to focus under at the oil immersion level or so. So those tissues, if you could able to process it properly, and definitely we can demonstrate uh, the, the attachment of the uh, bacteria. You can look at the, these are the rod shaped uh, which are being uh, attached with the microvilli of intestines or so. So they tight, uh, tightly attached and that leads, the, leads to the intestinal er erosions, complete loss and so I can say that but I'm not going into the pathology aspect. So then the diarrhea usually being started or the, the disturbances in the J tract usually being seen. You can see the clustered uh, organisms. Uh, we have a samples uh, received from uh, CDFD, CDFD uh, who are working with the uh, clusterial different what you call marking out the genes and introduction of other genes or so. And we have made a, a proper uh, section. So sectioning the bacteria is a challenging job or of course, any biological sample, sectioning, processing and sectioning is a challenging job for electron microscopy because in electron microscopy, artifacts are predominant at 20 to 25 percent. In, uh, in, uh, in a practicing laboratory or if we are, they are not uh, well versed with the techniques, uh, the artifacts, uh, more than 30% usually we do come across, like vesicles, like uh, dark spots, like which may resemble to the, uh, uh, what to call, uh, uh, fat globules or so on and so forth. And small, what to call, particles of the stain particles will also made us, like this, uh, made us to suspect that it's maybe the virus particles or so on. So these uh, cluster sections is a, a different way we can make it outer membrane, inner membrane, and in a core of the what we call the bacteria. So now this is a listeria. Listeria, of course, it can be easily demonstrated by using a special techniques for light microscopy. If it is being there in the tissue samples, uh, of course, these are all the cell lines, uh, uh, experimental uh, organisms I have taken. And this like a, a cafele bacteria, and we can have the flagella. So how the, the things will appear. So all these are the uh, normal or the common, uh, what to call uh, organisms, which have a contamination with the uh, food uh, particles, or you can say the food of a human being as well as animals. So of course we may exhibit the things in animals, it may not be possible. And uh, apart from this, I have a, a good examples for the parvoviral infections where uh, 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 the, the, the organisms, which is not related with the, uh, topic, uh, hence I have not included those things. So this uh, <clears throat> important thing, uh, we should not stop the questioning. So always we have to be because we are in the field of science. The growth of the science is depends only the pillar 
for the development and the growth of the science is only pushing it is a, a great man has given that quotation it is true what we are practicing now so as far as the scanning electron microscopes are concerned this is a very common football conditions we do come across with the aspergillus and uh, i have seen from the uh, 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 what to call animal tissue samples which have been contaminated with the same organisms and also the uh, what to call uh, uh, plant origin or i can say the uh, ingredients whatever we use for the animal food purpose or even the coconut for example whatever is being stored at home in the kitchen we do come across these things uh, so it can be easily demonstrated of course it is very easy to demonstrate those things under light microscopy or so on and so forth this is out of interest i have just focused and uh, these two things are like uh, it is like uh, uh, having in importance but it's not much uh, uh, uh what to call uh, uh, food industry related but hair contamination of human hair contamination uh, resembling that that i have made the what to call these things so human hair contamination is one of the greatest challenge for the chocolate industry wafers industry or in fact uh, any food industry even in the uh, what to call five star hotels or so so all the insects or you can say the human contaminants uh, human uh, uh, what to call uh, uh, here are you can say the the the, the bare foot uh, hands uh, which have a very great contamination with the things and we are evidence that every day in one or the other part of the nation so in uh, telangana state uh, very recently most of the government uh, uh, colleges schools uh, that is i can say the word like uh, social welfare department uh, we have a what to call uh, uh, a, 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 a residential schools residential schools uh, including triple it's or so people are suffering with so much of contamination with the insects or so so this like uh, the how the uh, 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 the organisms will also have the similar way they just travel through the blood and uh, i have a rich experience over here so we just usually deworm the animals whether it is a calf whether it is a uh, what to call a lamb or in the adult uh, uh capra and ovine whatsoever is we are using for the food uh, purpose so we just uh the, the biggest challenge is that uh, parasitic infestation or parasitic infection in the food animals is very common in our scenario so people will say that the deworming was been done and so on when we are just uh, observing this village structure or the things so when the crypts are there the different stages of larval stages uh, the l2 and l3 stage they deeply buried into the mucosal folds they deeply buried into the mucosal folds and they enter into that area and which may of course it may not have a significant uh, uh, what to call a health problems but it may lead to the uh, what to call uh, allergic reactions the individuals or so so i do come across with the different uh, villa structures so whether it is a poultry there is a broilers particularly and uh, sheep and goat intestines uh, i have an experiences though they have been given the clear information that these animals were deworked we have a big slaughter of this over here and we get the some of the students they are working on this in microbiology and other departments when the intestinal villi we get that guys to see things so their purpose has not been uh, is being defeated because of the presence of the number of larval under this sort of what to call uh, uh, mucus uh, cells or so under it that this again the marine sample how does it looks like as i said it is usually causes the diarrhea in human being it is being consumed we are the different uh, processing techniques of the muscles are uh, in the nrc meat so emu board and uh, spent muscles are uh, being treated differently and they have been packed different way it is a uh, better so all these process foods are not against the technology but the contamination processing uh, the contamination possibility of these processed foods are very challenging one that one can understand the things it all the muscle fibers in a different way they have been processed and stored packaged for the quite long time things are there now this is a real story what i just narrated in the beginning so you can see the fungal hyphal over here is all oily based preparation there all the oil drops how does it is Uh, looks like so it's all like you can see the 
scanning electron microscopy images. So the fungal hyphae are being seen on all these insect parts. In the given container, given container, randomly you have picked up from the different uh, what you call uh, areas of the processed foods which are being rejected by US uh, uh, FDO, uh, Food and Agriculture uh, Organ uh, Department, FA, Food and Agriculture Department, FAD or so. So they have just uh, US FAD and it has been uh, addressed properly and uh, they have taken uh, at most measures to avoid all these things because uh, in the food industry, I think we have a, a, a sweet usually being used like a sugar or so on and so forth. So whatever the different ingredients they use. So naturally insects are being attracted towards the, uh, those ingredients and uh, larval stages may not be visible to the individual. It may go on proliferate and it gets matured and uh, usually being seen. Even, this, the, the, even the processed products are there, which is not immediately wrapped. So they get attracted and it will be oversight of the employees uh, usually being contaminated. A beautiful, this is a very big challenge, a highly based uh, specimen preparation for scanning electron microscopy is a challenging job. And uh, these are the insect parts, demonstration uh, in the different parts. The selection of the specimen is also most important. Uh, we have a very clear uh, what to call uh, information on this and uh, they have addressed these things or so. So scanning electron microscopy of the organisms, again, uh, similar organisms I just mentioned. And we have a very good uh, exposure of, uh, about the Listeria and Clostridia organisms, whatever we are receiving from uh, different source of uh, uh, what to call uh, research stations, uh, not exactly to the food industry, but R&D sections of the different uh, say, uh, what to call uh, manufacturing uh, units. Uh, the contamination is there. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you one example over here. We all know that uh, the sterile, what you call uh, catgut is being used for internal suturing. One of the, what you call uh, uh, practitioner for Hyderabad, they want to compare the things because after suturing that particular indent uh, material, it is being, uh, infection is uh, resist, uh, what you call is prevailing in that particular uh, area, or you can say the part of the body which is being uh, used for the suturing. Then the sterile suture material I've taken out, it has been contaminated like anything, a number of organisms have been seen. So what I mean to say over here is the materials, the biomedical materials which are supposed to be sterile, we use for the human being as well as the animal science, or you can say the one, one health or one medicine concept is everything is one. So they are being contaminated and you can expect that the food industry, how they are being contaminated with the, uh, a, a, a common pathogens like Salmonella, Campylobacter, Listeria, Clostridium, and other fungal like Aspergillus or so on and so forth and uh, uh, what you call the fungal organisms. So all those things, uh, I think uh, number of images I have just focused on. So the crucial point and the basic uh, is that uh, we have to have a very proper uh, protocols have to be followed to demonstrate whatever the organisms I just focused over that. So sample collection is thumb rules I just mentioned with this over a period of time and with all the textbooks, whatever we have been used are referred to the electron microscopy. So these are the things which are very, very important. Always keep it in mind. So as fresh as possible, as thin as possible, as small as possible. The sample size is very, very important and the fresh sample is very, very essential for demonstration of any uh, what you call pathogens which are there intruded into the cellular structures or subcellular structures. So there's one and a surface area should be cleaned if it is being used out from the exudate or so and the size of the slices is should be millimeter 0.5 millimeter cube for transmission and more than one centimeter cube or even two centimeter cube for scanning electron microscope. I just mentioned as a, a fresh working solution. The preservative is totally different. It is only the 2.5 or 3% uh, phosphate buffer salad or the different uh, what to call uh, buffers are being used like a cacodylate buffer most of the labs they are using but uh, we are using only phosphate buffer salad which is very very suitable or it says are user friendly so 2.5% to 3% uh, phosphate, any buffer based uh, would all had have to be used so fixation should be 10 times to the volume of the tissue for super saturation of the proteins, or is the aldehyde groups in the protoaldehyde are true, then they get cleaved and attached with the protein moiety of the tissue uh, proteins and the networking usually being done. Proper networking is ensures that 
if they, all the subcellular structures are being preserved properly. It can be stored for a few hours, a few days, a few weeks, even few months, provided the, the, the preservative is most important. So proper labeling of the specimen is most important. These are, I can say, thumb rules for the collection, whether it is a food industry, whether it is a research, whether it is a diagnostic purpose, or it is like a, a, a biotechnology, what to call the tools, whatever they are being, uh, most of the biotechnology departments, they are conducting experiments in the uh, cell lines, as well as the experimental animals, and now they are rushing towards the electron microscopy. People are working on that, even including IITs, where in, uh, uh, bio lives are, can life science departments are coming up and people are working. Not only veterinarians, life science people are also conducting experiments and so on. So we all know that pretty well about the different methods and we usually use this, uh, what to call uh, immersion method. So perfusion method is very, very uh, excellent uh, uh, if you want to demonstrate uh, all minute structures at a single atom level. Perfusion method can be used uh, in, a, in a conventional method. Of course, uh, it is a very costly and people all over the globe use this immersion method. I just said previous slide is a 10 times to the volume of the tissue. So it's a, a chemicals, whatever we are using, I just focus as a good head is very important. Uh, how do just uh, we just peep into the uh, cell? Because uh, there, there are again uh, certain issues. Uh, we have to keep it in mind whenever we are collecting. As I said, beginning sample collection is the first and thumb rule. The thumb rules I just focused in the previous slide. And the next one is immediately it's a fixation or the preservation. Then later it is a, a processing. It's a multi-step phenomena like light microscopy. It's time consuming. Meticulous planning and meticulous what you call execution of the plan is most important to demonstrate the contaminants or food pathogens in the different structures of the cell. Whatever I have focused previously is important. Uh, all these things are associated uh, with the things. And infiltration, of course, these are the laboratory related issues. These are the individual company or the individual scientist or the student, whoever is making things is most important. First and two points are very important for them. 50% of your results. Sample collection and preservation will be also, they are associated with the two first two points. The rest of the points are associated with the uh, individual, what to call, a laboratory who are working with the electron microscopy. So, after processing uh, infiltration usually being done, then the blocks preparation, then the sectioning. The sectioning here is a different. Uh, so, semithin sections, it is very essential to, to judge that uh, the processed steps are very proper or not and uh, desired quantity or uh, desired uh, uh, Cell components are being there in the given section or so for that judgment purpose we use with semi thin section followed by the ultra thin section and the staining is being done. Please keep it in mind any electron microscopy only black and white images usually being there because we are not using any differential staining. We are using only heavy metal stains like urinal acetate, saturated solution, 1% lead citrate solution, both the what to call heavy metals will attach with the atoms of the host to tissue or host to cell, which is being attached with the, what we call, the preservative, like a glutaldehyde, or so or so forth. These are the very, very important steps. So if you want to peep inside the cell, you want to peep inside the cell, two points are very important in previous slide also, I just focused later in the laboratory area, wherever the technician is working is uh, meticulously plan and execute the work timely. So there are different types of uh, what we call embedding materials that are available based on the requirement. People will use the things in a different way. So, so this, this slide, of course, this slide is working with the different types of microscopes. People may have their own idea, sir, what is this, this, and so. So electron microscopes are only two ways. One is the scanning, other one is a transmission. In the transmission, it is a biotransmission and the high resolution transmission electron microscope. So high resolution are being used by the non-biological scientists, that means is a material science people will use, biotem is being used by the, what to call the biological scientists. The cryotomography is the latest one which is available in India, only one in the IISC. So all these cumbersome procedures is being uh, away to get the immediate results is on the cryotomography images. There's a stem, what we can call it as a scanning transmission electron microscope where the cryopreservative will be there and cryoprocessing will be done automatically and the sections will be done. 
like a CT scan, PET scan level. So multiple sections is being done. Those sections can be viewed for scanning purpose and those sections can also be viewed for the transmission purpose once it is being properly stitched by the given software. So to and fro images can be seen. So in conventional method, transmission electron microscopy, we get only 2D image and uh, conventional method scanning electron microscopy will get a 3D image, whereas in STEM, 3D image, to and fro, the a single atom analysis can be done, very much advanced and highly costly equipment which is available in India, only one it is working. These are the standard procedures, whatever I have shown you previous two slides, it is all the, from the standard textbooks and standard journals. So same thing. So summarize that preparation aspect, as I said, uh, it is very, very important. You want to demonstrate uh, a given changes in the cell or intrusion of any pathogens into the parts of the cell or as a, as a microbial, for example, I mentioned, or deeply burying into the mucous globules in the intestines or it enters into the what you call uh, a, a rich, uh, what you call uh, uh, sugar rich uh, cellular components so in the different uh, what you call organs or organelles or so. So it is very, very important the collection, preservation and processing. So as far as the summarized information up to the dehydration level, up to the dehydration level, it is a similar processing tips are being followed for the scanning as well as the transmission. So in the transmission after dehydration, I said in the previous slides, infiltration, a methodical infiltration is very, very important and we have to train the tissue or you have to train the cells into the changed environment uh, in methodically in a, in a gradual manner by increasing the resin concentration into the interstitium. We all know that the latest, uh, latest knowledge says that biggest organ in the body, whether it's animal or a human being, is only interstitium. And interstitium is the culprit for the transmission. Apart with these blood-borne diseases, for example, it may enter through the different roots and it enters into the stream, through the blood, and side by side, the phagocytic cell will also travel, pathogen will also travel and then trapped into the interstitium. And from interstitium gets attracted with the different receptors, then it binds with the outer surface of the cell and it, 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 it creates its own way of the congenital atmosphere, they enter into the cytosol. So so those things, so once we have to demonstrate things in a methodical way, the interstitium, when it is being empty after dehydration, without disturbing the cellular component, a methodical way we have to introduce the a synthetic rubber material into the interstitium that is infiltration of the resins. Once it is properly embedded and it is being subjected for the polymerization purpose and once the polymerization is being done, then the sectioning is being done, staining and followed by the image analysis which is being done for transmission electron microscopy. It is similar to the top light microscopy or you can bite field microscopy, the paraffin embedding method. So dehydration infiltration, of course, for light microscopy, we use paraffin. For uh, transmission electron microscopy, we use resins. Different companies are producing different sorts of resins. Of course, the chemical composition I'll just show you later on. And for the scanning electron microscopy, after dehydration, there is another point. We call it as a critical point trial. So there's a special instrument is available. So we have to remove the entire moisture from the, the processed specimen. So we are not using this uh, critical point drying. It's a bit hazardous in nature. Operation of the instrument is a difficult task and costly affair. Instead of this, we are using uh, what you call uh, the <clears throat> vacuum silica desiccator is giving excellent results. Once it is over, it has to be mounted on a, a carbon conductivity tape. Then sputtering is being done. Here we are using heavy metals like a urinal acetate. Here in the sense, transmission, we are using urinal acetate and lead citrate. With these atoms will bound with the atoms of the specimen. Here the heavy metal is being used as a gold, which can sputter, which can have a uniform coating at 40 to 46 nanometers thickness over this processed specimen and which facilitate the conductivity of the electrons. We hear also the conductivity of electrons is being enhanced by using urinal acetate and lead citrate for transmission and using a blood, what you call the gold or platinum or even the carbon is being uh, facilitated. The conductivity of the uh, primary electron converting into the secondary electron is being escalated by using this sort of sputtering or so. These are the different what you call uh, uh, the glutolyhyde oil. It is a different types of glutolyhydes are available. People have a lot many what you call confusions. Glutolyhyde is being used therapeutically for the cauterization purpose of warts. It is a therapeutic glutolyhyde that is a different. And AR, LR, we all know that that can be used for the laboratory purpose. But 
for electron microscopy, we have to use 50% electron microscopy grade glutaldehyde or 25% electron microscopy grade glutaldehyde. So it's a costly affair. We have to receive that in a proper way in the minus 20 degree centigrade so have to be stored properly. Then, then we have to prepare from this is a working stock solution followed by the working solution. These ampules are where in the osmium tetroxide is there in the electron microscopy. This is one of the important steps we followed. I have shown in previous slide. So this is a primary fixation is being done with the glutaldehyde. Then after washing, secondary fixation is being done by using the osmium tetroxide, uh, which get converts the what to call uh, tissue to the black color, which facilitate further steps or so. It's like a told in blue is being used for the staining of uh, semi thin sections or so. The glass knife preparation knives are two types usually being used for electron microscopy. One is a gla glass cutting knife, other one is a diamond cutting knife. Diamond cutting knife is a costly affair, so we usually use the glass knives and we prepare our own way. Any laboratory they have to prepare their own way. The grids how we use is a, a sterile, is a naked grid, and this grid is uh, covered with the a carbon coat or the farm over coated grid for the direct sample preparation. The shigella organisms, the motile organisms, whatever I focused, we use this sort of what to call uh, grids and the uh, tissue sections. I have shown you that the microvilli will, uh, will be mounted onto this. So these are the grid storage box. It's a costly affair. Grid preparation aspect with the capsules. What we use this and these are the resins, which are the different uh, the polymer. What to call uh, uh, different four chemicals. I'll just show you the next one. These are the traditional way we use the what you call uh, the the films of uh, cassettes are being used for this for the film development or so. So these are the uh, little I want to focus on the comparison with the light microscopy and the electron microscopy. Electron microscopy means it is like a transmission electron microscopy. It absolutely it is reversed to the top light microscopy. Weaving chamber for light microscopy at the top, but weaving chamber light mi electron microscopy at the bottom. The source of light electron microscopy at the top and the source of light for the light microscopy is at the bottom. So these are the uh, differential points usually being sun and uh, of course people have interested that can they can go through this is all uh, not going to touch with the much of the anatomy. It is in one of the important uh, textbooks that have been mentioned like uh, it like a, a analogous to that of the slide projector where three important components are their source of light then the slide then the screen similar way we can find that source of electrons the specimen then the fluorescent screen usually being seen the things so these are like analogous these are anatomy micro or histology of the uh, what to call uh, electron microscope it's not much important uh, for the learners or so uh, once you have a access you can make the things how the differential points for the between the electron microscopy like TEM and SEM I focused previous slide and now you can compare that with the light microscopy how does the differential points which is easy to understand of course the internal components of the different uh, uh, Lenses, these are lenses are the matter. Lenses are not the lens exactly to say electromagnetic coils which facilitate the electrons emit properly and travel through the a small nasal and it gets transmitted through the a processed specimen or the grid or so. So these are the comparison and it's also same thing as a scanning electron microscopy. Uh, sorry, there now you can see this is the specimen port, how the samples are being placed over here. You can see the same thing. This is a cryo electron microscopy. We do not have here, it is there in the number of uh, uh, other biological laboratory institutes or so. Now scanning this is the area where the specimen is being placed in this. So different types of source of electrons, different filaments are being used. The so lab seeks and then uh, what you call the field emission. These two filaments are being used by the material science people because high energy, high what you call uh, electrons are required for that purpose they are using and routinely in any biological research institute, uh, the tungsten filament is being used. These are the what to call uh, a two years ago. This is advanced, and uh, now this is the advanced one. It is there in the Indian Institute of Chemical Technology of uh, uh, CSIR Institute. It's an excellent microscope having a tomography and so on and so forth. And uh, this is like a advanced uh, scanning electron microscopy with all other accessories. And whatever the electron microscopy we are using, scanning is only 10 nanometers depth analysis is being done. If you have all these accessories, the two and four entire analysis of the uh, individual cell can be analyzed and uh, uh, periodic table, whatever we have the elements uh, in the cell composition that can be easily analyzed. And so, so now I want to take you all to my laboratory. So this is it's my in the sense is a PBR not TV laboratory, a Prusca Labs. It's a processing. It is uh, like a fume hood. All chemicals, whatever we are using, they are 
irritant in nature, carcinogenic in nature. That is the reason we have to use all specimens will be placed on a platform under orbital shaker. Intrusion, extrusion of the respective solutes have to be properly done. Otherwise, it interferes. That means, I said in the beginning, 20 to 30 percent. Uh, uh, what we call any specimen is being prepared, uh, artifacts are very common. If processing steps are being uh, not properly followed, artifacts number gets increased and it gets confusion in the analysis aspect. Uh, these are the light microscopes, how we can just prepare a mounting of the specimens usually being done. And this is a knife maker and uh, I have shown you in the previous slide, how does it looks like. So once you make the prepare the knife and it has to be stored, it's a dust proof cabin, it has to be properly stored after Love what you call attaching the boards uh, with the with the what you call seal with the dental wax or so. Now this is a micro tome, ultra micro tome we use. It's a 10x what you call eyepiece will be there and uh, it's a knife glass knife is being used and the specimen will be mounted and the trimming usually being done. It's a manual trimming followed by the semi thin sectioning or so. Then once the sectioning is over. This is the alignment, the anterior part of the knife and the anterior part of the specimen, a proper alignment is most important. Once it is clear, then the ribbon will come in such a way that uh, this is a diamond cutting knife and this is a uh, what to call a glass knife. The, the changes will be seen, you can be pure, pure uh, what to call, uh, uh, ribbon is more uh, uh, thin and uh, very proper way it will come and uh, in the glass knife, of course, is a difficult task. So there are different three colors will be developed. One is a ash color, other one is the purple color, other is the gold color, or the combination of either two is the indication, but the section is very proper. So once it is properly done, then definitely it is being subjected for the staining. So staining, we use the petri plates and so many precautions we have to take and proper washing is most important, but taking care, it should not be washed out. So entire one week exercise is go waste if it is being done. These are the different types of, we can say the urinal acetate and red acetate tops. Uh, over a parafilm which is mounted over the glass slide and uh, the staining process is being just shown you and uh, these are the what you call observation part is a transmission what we have is a very 2002 old model till it is working we can work for another couple of years and this is also 2002 we have purchased is scanning so this is from the geo this is from the hitachi and uh, of course is obsolete of these sort of instruments are not available and advances are coming to this uh, two companies or so. These are the grids, whatever we use for transmission. These are the trimming. Trimming of the block is like a sharpening of the lead pencil by taking care not to disturb the lead pencil. The, 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 the osmium tetroxide which convert that tissue into the black color which stains, which facilitate, I said, the previous slides. Uh, so it is a uh, so trimming is most important, followed by the semi thin sections or so. These are the grids and the tweezers. You can look at this, this specimen specimen number or so. So these are the uh, what to call uh, stubs. So for transmission we use the grids, but uh, for scanning we use the stubs. Stub is placed with the, uh, the stub holder and uh, carbon conductivity tape other things. These are the films, as I said, it is a conventional method we are using, we are making things. These are the accessories. All these accessories are very, very important for uh, 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 any electron microscope laboratory are so chillers are resolved in dark room area. So these are some of the things. So with this, uh, I can uh, end my presentation and uh, I request all the organizers to open this for the discussion and interaction purpose. So I think, I hope so. I have uh, touched the assignment what they have given to us in the beginning of the slides how the organisms usually being seen in the cell components, the cellular components are the, as the cell as a surface area or so on and so forth. Yeah, thank you so much for the uh, organizers and especially my colleagues uh, inviting me to have interaction with all you. And uh, it's a great opportunity to, though I'm not able to see you physically, and um, I'm, I'm requesting you all, please participate in the forthcoming International Veterinary Pathology Congress in the month of November. And you can visit us, you can look at us physically, please. Thank you so much. Yeah, it is open. And with the permission, I'll, I'll just say that word. Yeah, it is, op it is open to you, sir, please. Uh, uh, thank you very much, sir, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, whatever the... Uh, information related to electron uh, microscopy you have uh, shared uh, whatever the pictures photographs images we have seen that is uh, definitely uh, very much useful to you all the participants very excellent uh, presentations sir you have given about all these aspects of uh, miss uh, what we can say the different 
investigation tools, different types of uh, means what we can say the samples and then uh, protocols, basic uh, protocols for sample preparations, collections. We have elaborated the different types of electron microscopes. Uh, we have uh, also comparison between the different electron microscope as well as light microscopy. Uh, we have seen, although uh, it's a virtual meet, but uh, you have sh shown your uh, Raska labs and that virtually also that we got an opportunity all the participants we have seen uh, very nice uh, exposure to all the participants definitely sir participants will get benefit of that uh, now i request the uh, participants uh, they can ask the questions two three questions from the participants please So one question is there in the chat box. How to send the samples? How to send the samples? The samples have to be sent. I said uh, it, the size is most important and the proper fresh sample is most important. Prepare your working solution at your end, for which you have to purchase the glutaraldehyde of 25% or 50% electron microscopy grade. By using phosphate buffer saline, you have to prepare a 5% stock solution. After preparation of 5% stock solution, you have to prepare a working solution one hour before, a day before, and 10 times to the volume of the tissues, 10 times the volume of the tissue, the tissue should be properly immersed into that, a small piece in mm cube is a 0.5 to 1 mm cube for transmission and centimeter cube for the scanning that can be stored in a glass vial, tied it very proper uh, screw cap, then you can send it without adding any what you call uh, cold uh, chain and uh, if you want to have ensure that you can add the cold chain it is, may not interfere much uh, in the results sir. as such you can send it to the laboratory through biological sample courier services are available in india people are sending in that way so uh, for example uh, what are the charges sir? yeah charges uh, we are charging for uh, transmission 7500 per sample 5,500 per sample for scanning and there is a student discount is there for the 25% for uh, uh, other students and for our students it is 50% or so on. So the bill will be given on the student's name and uh, of course up to December I may not, uh, uh, and I'm not in a position to process and need to think because we are busy with our own uh, yep. conference work. Uh, so after December again the people can come and we use these facilities. Yeah. Any other participant, please? So if no questions, we can wind up now, sir? Yeah, yeah. No questions. Once again, uh, thanks a lot, sir, for accepting the our invitation and uh, spread your valuable time uh, for your presentation very nice presentation thanks a lot sir thank you so much once again i am expressing my sincere thanks to all the organizers and particularly uh, I, I can't even say the names everyone who are being involved with this uh, what you yeah. call uh, put in their workshop uh, I think so program. yeah dr meshram he is now at nagpur sir university at yeah, yeah, yeah. reporting yes. uh, yeah, examination duty Kindly convey my wishes to everyone who is connected directly or indirectly with this uh, uh, what do you call organ uh, 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 program, sir. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all the participants. Thank you once again, and we'll meet tomorrow morning at uh, ten forty-five. Thank you.